I'm not a fan of Toronto. It is disgusting. There is an increased amount of homelessness situation going around. Toronto's population is around 2.9 million and a large chunk of it is made up of immigrants. And being the financial capital of the country, there are a number of opportunities available in this city and this makes Toronto the number one choice for most immigrants moving to Canada. So last year when I was moving, I also had Toronto as one of my options and ultimately due to a few different reasons, I ended up moving to Toronto. And if you have been following my channel, you would know that. I'm not a fan of Toronto. So when I got this question in one of my video comments, I thought it's important to address and share why I don't really like Toronto. But still I choose not to move anywhere else. But let me also clear it out that I don't really hate Toronto. Hate is a very strong word. And I don't really want to associate it with Toronto just yet. I moved to Canada last year and ever since the first day I had such experiences in the city that it became difficult for me to form a good opinion about Toronto. A little bit of racial abuse. This is probably the worst Airbnb I've stayed at. However, I I'm not going to go into many details about all those things, but if you're interested, you can watch all the videos in this playlist called Moving to Canada and there's another one called Toronto Adventure. We have captured all the experiences and all my opinions in different videos and they are going to be very helpful for someone who's looking to get opinions and views about Canada, the positives and the negatives both. But before we get into the issues, I don't want to sound snobbish or privileged or entitled because these are the things that I face on a regular basis and I think that it should be put out there because these problems and issues exist in Toronto and people don't talk about it just for the fact that they don't want to sound a certain way. But here I am putting down all my barriers and sharing everything that I feel is not right with Toronto. The first issue I have with this city is that it is disgusting. <laughs> I live in downtown Toronto and yes, I chose to live in downtown Toronto and trust me, as soon as you get out, the only thing you see apart from the traffic and construction is garbage. Downtown is supposed to be the one place which represents your city and the condition of the downtown in Toronto is so bad that I don't feel like even going out and walking around because it smells of pee, there's garbage everywhere and you just don't know what you're going to step onto if you don't look. There are dustbins installed in the sidewalk but the garbage is mostly outside of the dustbins and it smells so bad that you can't really walk past it. Specifically the area around Young London Square, Queen Station, King Station, they are in such a condition that walking or standing there for a long time, it's not just something that you would find pleasant. And the reason why downtown Toronto is so smelly, disgusting and messy is due to the fact that there is an increased amount of homelessness situation going around in the city too. Which is my second issue with living here. But don't get me wrong, I don't have an issue with homeless people. I have an issue with the government who does nothing about the homeless people. I don't know whose responsibility it is, but in my eyes, it's the government's responsibility to provide them a home, shelter, uh, adequate food, clean living conditions, food, water and the basic necessities. But they fail to provide every single one of those things. And that is why if you go around in Toronto, you will see 10 cities being propped up in parks. Especially in downtown Toronto, if you go around Wellesley Street, Sherburn Street, around the Kensington Market area, you will see how many people are living on the streets and just staying in their tents. I'm just glad they have tents, but there are some people who don't even have that, so they just sleep under the bridge inside a sleeping bag to keep themselves warm. The homelessness situation in Toronto is no joke. And every time I go around these areas, I just see many more people on the streets than before. There was a study conducted and according to that, there are at least 9,000 people homeless in Toronto on any given night. To put it into perspective, 9,000 people is a capacity of a small stadium. The homeless shelters are at almost full capacity every single night and there are thousands of people on subsidized housing waiting list already. Top it off with some insane cost of living and increased inflation rate, there's nowhere for these people to go so they sleep on the streets. A lot of these people are suffering from physical or mental issues and they can't really do anything about their situation because they are helpless. The only people they can turn towards is the government and the government does nothing about it. And it just makes me so angry to see that these people are so helpless and when they are that helpless, they turn to other alternatives to avoid facing the reality that they are living in. And those alternatives are drugs. And my third concern with living in Toronto is the growing drug problem. Most of the people living on the streets are addicted to drugs. And guess what? Drug toxicity is one of the leading causes of death amongst homeless people. 
If you are aware about what's happening in Toronto, then you would have come across news stories that tell you about the random violent attacks happening on TTC and how people are being stabbed here and there, being attacked, being pushed, poked by needles. And this is not very uncommon. This is happening on an everyday basis in Toronto. And a lot of these attacks are done by people who were under the influence of drugs. Living in a different country, when you're researching about these things and if someone tells you about uh, maybe this is happening or that is happening or, or you come across one story, you think this is just one story, this is not an everyday thing. But when you come here and you face it yourself and you see it happening every single day, you realize how big this crisis, drug crisis is and how violent people have become in this city. And just because of these situations, I do not feel safe going out. I constantly have to look over my shoulder, think what I'm doing, what I'm saying. Even when I'm recording, I try to like hide it so people don't get aggravated or triggered by the, just by the fact that I'm recording something. And in simple words, this city is going downhill by each passing day. It's downright scary living in Toronto these days. There's one more thing that is connected to these three things and is a problem in Toronto is the cost of living crisis. The source of these problems is the fact that cost of living is very high. It's very expensive to live in Toronto versus the pays that you get are super low. Ontario's minimum wage is $16.55 an hour. But the living wage that you need to make to sustain a decent life in Ontario is $25.05 an hour. But what is a living wage? If you don't know, then living wage is the amount of money that a person needs to make so that the individual does not live in poverty. So do you see the current living wage versus minimum wage gap in Toronto? It's pretty big. The pay scale in Toronto is so low that it's very hard to afford a good life in the city. You would obviously know about the rental crisis where the rents are going very very high and still people are applying for those places because they don't have any other option. So when I say every time that the cost of living in Toronto is going off the roof of the charts, I'm not exaggerating, it actually is. For one person, the average cost of living in Toronto is anywhere around four to five thousand dollars a month. This includes accommodation, transportation, groceries, uh, leisure activities, and everything else. And with that expense, one should at least make seventy-five to eighty-five thousand dollars a year to afford that kind of expenses and to live a decent life. But let me put a few things into perspective. The average salary in Toronto is sixty-two thousand dollars a year. And the more your annual income grows, the more taxes you pay and the less net salary you will be bringing in home. Let that sink in. Also, cost of living is not going to decline in this city. It's only going to rise because of the issues that are going around here. Career-wise and income-wise, it's very hard to grow in Toronto. So once you reach about $75,000-$80,000 to make the next jump, it is very, very difficult unless you have got loads of experience. And that is why I also think that people try and move to US after a few years working in Canada because it's very hard to get that income jump in this country. And now since cost of living is high, what we are working towards is not to sustain and live a happy life, it's to survive in this current economic scenario. And when you're making ends meet, when you're just surviving, you're not happy because you're not able to make your wishes and dreams come true. See, it's all connected. And I feel I think I should also touch the topic of taxes because this is another concern that actually eats me up from inside and makes me so angry that I cannot explain in words. The amount of tax I pay versus the kind of services I get in this city has such a big gap that it's unimaginable. With services, I primarily mean healthcare and police. You would know the situation of Canadian healthcare. It's free, but it's not really accessible. Unless it's a life-threatening situation or something has actually happened or it's an accident, the police doesn't really come. And it's not just that. I feel like my tax money is being drained out and put into the pockets of corrupt politicians who are using them for their own benefit. It's a pretty controversial topic and I won't really get into it today, but we will talk about it soon. And while we are talking about the problems I have with Toronto, how can I forget about weather? But I'm not going to say that Toronto's weather is not good. That's not the problem. The problem is, because of the weather, it's very hard to travel. Throughout the whole year, there is a very small window to travel in Canada. For example, if I want to go and see Ban for Newfoundland or any other place in Nova Scotia, I have to only go in summer because in winters, the snow and the cold is so bad that you can't really travel and see anything. And most of the parks are also closed, so it's not possible. So obviously, traveling in winters is not possible. But in summers, there is another problem. Everyone wants to travel. And because of that, it's very hard to get accommodations, flights, park passes, or even parking. 
people book their holidays and plan their vacations months in advance and if we are going during holidays or long weekends i need to forget traveling in peace and a lot of you might say that i should just leave canada and go travel somewhere else but it's always not possible to travel internationally since i have an indian passport i need to get visas for every other country i want to visit and that is a process it not just pack your bags and leave for the next country you want to visit with just a ticket in your hand international travel requires money and planning as well so it's always not possible to travel internationally and i sometimes want to travel just 2 hours outside of my city but because there's such cutthroat competition to get park passes to find accommodation to find a car rental it's just not possible or it becomes very expensive to travel in canada during peak season or during summer months in general and the last thing that gets on my nerves about toronto is the constant construction and oh my god it does not stop toronto is famous for construction and i have seen that there's so much construction happening in the city and they go on for decades sometimes Lanes are reduced to one which causes traffic and it's just an annoying state to live in. I live near Gardner and I can see the kind of traffic that piles up every single evening when it's office hour. And I can tell the roads that are closed since last one year and they have not even started the construction. Construction in this city is utter chaos. These are some of the many issues I have with Toronto but now the big question is if I have so many issues with this city why don't I just pack up and leave? In simple words, it's easier said than done. Toronto is not the most perfect city. It has its problems, and I have my own love-hate relationship going on with it. And the main reasons why I'm not leaving is because moving is difficult, and with the current rental crisis going on in Canada, it's impossible to find a good apartment at a decent rent. Moreover, my office is at downtown, and my partner works in Markham, and he has to physically go to the office. So staying in a different city is also not possible for us. Our friends also live around the same areas, so we socialize with them on a regular basis. And in simple words, we have become comfortable with the discomfort. And getting out of comfort zone is not an easy task. I really wish it was as easy as pack up and move to another place, but sadly it is not, especially in this particular socio-economic scenario. Also it doesn't matter how much I dislike the city it is a new experience and a challenge for me which I am determined to overcome and whatever makes me uncomfortable teaches me something new and I am glad that I got the opportunity to live here and work here it is not the city of my dreams but a stop along the way I'm not sure how long I'll live here but I do know that I want to cherish every moment learn and grow from it one thing I know for sure that Toronto is surely not a place I want to live permanently and I'm working towards another alternative And until then I promise to bring you unbiased and honest reviews about my experiences in Toronto so you can see both sides of the picture and decide whether this city is worth moving or not